good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News on 3FM 92.7. This bulletin is coming to you live from our studio here at Adisaway in Accra and on our various social media pages, specifically Facebook and Twitter. Coming up for the next 30 minutes, the New Patriotic Party, NPP, revokes the membership of four individuals. We will be updating you on who these gentlemen are and the reasons cited by the NPP for their revocation of membership. Also coming up, after weeks of causing justice administration to partially come to a standstill, jurors in the Ashanti region resume work today. We'll be updating you on that as well when we go to the Ashanti region. And later in the bulletin, the NDC's flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama, has reiterated a promise to investigate the death of a 14-year-old boy in Techiman during the 2020 elections. Details of all these and more for the next 30 minutes. Stay with us. This is 3FM. Do get interactive with us. We'll be happy to hear your thoughts on the many stories we have for you this evening. I beg your pardon this afternoon. And on to some other stories now. With the December 7, 2024 polls, some 13 months away, a lot seems to be happening on the political scene. The governing New Patriotic Party has revoked the membership of four prominent members of the party, Yao Boabia Samoa, Nana Ohininto, Hobson Adoe, and Boniface Abubakar Sadiq. This, uh, the party is in a statement which was signed by the General Secretary Justin Kodia Frimpong said that the decision is to revoke their membership and it is attributed to their public endorsement of a presidential aspirant other than the party's elected flag bearer, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. According to the party, the endorsement is a breach of Articles 35A4 and 391 of the party's constitution, which emphasizes members' obligation to abide by and publicly uphold the decision of the party. And uh, so we'll take you through a few excerpts of what the party said in that statement on the back of which they have decided to sack these four members of the party. Now, their reason for doing so is because they believe that the members have publicly supported and endorsed the Alan Tremontaine campaign or ticket, which is uh, the symbol of the butterfly. And on the back of that, the party has decided to give them the boot out of the party. So let's uh, take you down memory lane and bring you some excerpts of key things that have been said by members of these four members who have been sacked by the NPP. And a great sympathizer of Movement for Change. And December 7, 2024, I'm going to vote for Alan Kojo Tremontaine. And then the parliamentary, I'll vote for the MPP parliamentary candidate in my constituency. So that is my stand. Uh, I have my right to join any uh, association that I want. This is not a political party, it's just a movement. But my political party is New Patriotic Party. If they don't want that arrangement, they can sack me and I'm ready to go. So that is Hobson Adoye who uh, has also been sacked now. He was saying that his support for the movement for change, which has the symbol of a butterfly, is because it is a movement and not a political party. But looks like the party has a different understanding of that particular conversation and has given him the sack. But what are members of the public saying about this development? What does this even mean for the NPP going into the 2024 elections? We sampled the views of a number of Ghanaians and this is what they had to say. It's not fair. It's not fair because we are all, I mean, family. And I don't know the reason why one cannot dedicate to support others or support who he wants or who he, he, he wish to support. Party shouldn't be like, I mean, party should be like a family. If my family to support party A, I have to support. And because of supporting our line, it might be like, you sack them. It's not fair because you all have a choice to support whoever you want to support. So you hear the views of some Ghanaians on the decision of the NPP to sack four members because of their public endorsement of the flag bearer of the um, movement for change, which is a movement, not even a political party. So we'll try and get reactions from the party shortly regarding this decision. But the portions of that statement, which um, contain the sacking of these four gentlemen, uh, says in part that uh, Article 391 of the Constitution of the NPP says a member of the party who stands as an independent candidate against the officially elected member 
other party or joins or declares his or her support for another political party or for an independent candidate when the party has sponsored a candidate in a general or by election automatically forfeits his or her membership of the party so it is on this grounds that the party says it is sucking these four gentlemen and uh, let me take you through who they are say so in line with these constitutional provisions it is the view of the npp that hopes in adoye nana ohininto boniface abubakar sadiq and yabwa binga samwa have automatically forfeited their membership of the party they are therefore no longer members of the npp and then in conclusion it says the npp entreats its members to remain true to their duties as per Article 3.5 of the party's constitution. We further call upon all our members to bear in mind that the party's focus is to unite its ranks and rally the support of Ghanaians to make history by winning the 2024 general elections. And this is signed by Justin Kudia Frimpong, General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party. So we are working the lines to see if we can get the NPP to give us you know, further understanding of this decision. I mean, clearly their constitution says otherwise, but what is it that the likes of Nanao Hininto have said or done? Because we know him to be a very close ally of Alan Chemantin. However, publicly, he has not uh, said anything, you know, for, for those who are just watching the political space to make a final decision on. So maybe we'll get us further understanding of this particular issue when we are able to connect to the NPP to give us some position on it. In the meantime, though, let's go and listen to former President John Dramani Mahama still on the political front because he has also been speaking on a number of issues uh, regarding the country, the economy, the governance style, and all is in a build-up to the 2024 elections. You would also recall that uh, he has already started what he calls the building the Ghana we want campaign uh, so he's started from the bono region he is in the bono east region today as we speak we'll try and uh, speak to komla klucha correspondent who has been on the trail of uh, the former president who is the flag bearer of the ndc but let's go to some specifics he has been touching on over the weekend when he was in the bono region he has uh, descended heavily on government over uh, the npp government's inability to find the killers of an 18-year-old boy who died during the 2020 elections in Techiman South. Six others were injured during the elections with their families seeking justice currently at the court. Former President John Mahama, an NDC flag bearer, speaking to wood sellers in Techiman, says it is insensitive and discriminatory for that the lack of commitment on the part of government to offer compensation and to apprehend the killers of this young man. So let's listen to former President John Mahaman and the NDC's flag bearer. Sir Obi Koye Boni and now Obi Koye or my NDC car and I said Bibia. Oh man, Penya said the NDC. I was a Omoshushim. Nasa man Penya and Casababa Bijina Waka sell. Only Panin Yashi, Munjano. Now, yes, sir. Emma Obia and Sro, Obia and Sro sell or Betam or my NDC car. Ain't he? I was sir, yes, sorry, Gina, if he said, Sir Sikani Ira. Anke ye sika ye debe ye empuntu ama nipano. Ye sika anke ebe buwa ama omayne tu mpon. Enti, endi si ba, abaya ye bano, ye omwa omo boye hon bayi eni katasiche eni proye. Se woko ye bibi na omo sasu omwa. Me ame ye president, me ma mbeke bi mao. Emnani ube di, se ne wose eni udi. And that is the NDC's flag bearer John Dramani Mahama. Now he has also... Um, been speaking on a number of issues where he, um, you know, insisted that he will cancel the teacher licensure exam uh, when he is given the nod in 2024. Would we'll give you bits and pieces of reactions that have come in as a result of that particular component of former President John Mahama's tour. But let's speak to Komla Kluche, who has been with the former president on since the tour began a few days ago. Komla, good afternoon. Thank you for your time. We know that uh, the former president is currently in the Bono East region. Beyond the bits about the promise to find the killers of this 18-year-old boy, what else has the flag bearer been saying? And a certain level of commitment must be shown by leadership of, or uh, the political uh, people or politicians 
even before they get the money, and even after they've gotten the mandate, that that equally has to be thought up. And so, um, so Bahamas is saying that getting the views of the people, well, it is not as though and it's doing it just uh, for uh, the sake of it, but it's showing them that it's going to be uh, uh, the manifesto of the that they have uh, told him on a very different day, they said he wants their opinion. Right. And, and Kamala, uh, still on that, we know that the former president um, or the NDC flag bearer uh, has a few more places to go to. But he touched on the issue of the payment of allowances for nursing trainees. That was when he started the Bono East Regional Tour. Uh, how has the response been, you know, specifically on the back of the fact that it was a promise the NPP government made to pay the nurses their uh, allowances? But... It is in arrears of almost about two years. What has the former president been saying on that? Well, he's asking uh, the president, Nana Bufalu, and then his vice Dr. Gonga, to simply pay the people because they made the promise. And the much as they made the promise, they should go ahead and, uh, and uh, uh, pay the big long over the for them to pay. But he says, over three hours, and that he brings that money. All right, Kamala, thank you so much uh, for your time and the updates you've given us. He is on the campaign trail of uh, former President John Mahama, who is the NDC's flag bearer currently in the Bono East region. Now, it was uh, at the beginning of his tour, when he started from the Bono region, that he touched on a number of issues, particularly bordering on his decision to cancel the teacher licensure exam if he comes into power. So first of all, uh, let's listen to the former president, what he said, and then would uh, bring you some reactions on what people make of that decision. I heard that in, uh, and for that, on the back to college, four years, no mature exam. I feel the amateur exam. I feel the amateur exam. A group of the amateur final exam. No more pass it. You are passing, you are telling me you teacher for no. No, what I say, almost a amateur exam video. I can't imagine how much you tell me about that. Hey, you. Ain't you happy to see a bad licensure exam? You don't hear it for and that's uh, former President John Dramani Mahama, who has really excited the rank and file of the nursing uh, course. So let's speak to Evelyn Tingma. Evelyn, good evening. Uh, I beg your pardon. Good afternoon. Thank you for your time. You've been engaging with some student nurses. Um, what have they said about this decision? Good afternoon. Mixed reaction from the students at the Accra College of Education. Uh, they are and what basically some of them are saying that those who are arguing for it to be scrapped. Basically, what they are saying is that, um, you know now we have the colleges of education doing four years. And so um, they are saying that they go through four years to learn a lot. And so when they come out, they don't expect that they should write another licensure exam for them to be able to go through to become a professional teacher. And those who are arguing that they should not, they should not be scrapped, um, they are also arguing from the point that it gives them the opportunity to um, work when they travel outside. For instance, in the UK, when you go there, they, they don't access them any longer for them to become a teacher. They go through the normal process. And so they are also arguing that it should not be scrapped. But of course, others are saying that it's, it's, it's a lot. They go through a lot of learning in the schools, and for that matter, it should be scrapped. And that is basically what the students here or the teacher trainees here are saying from the Accra College of Education, Martin. And did you also engage the uh, tutors, um, those who teach these students, and do, do they also agree that this um, exam should be cancelled? Yes, Martin, earlier I spoke to the principal of the school, Professor Samuel Atintonu, and he is saying that uh, for him, he doesn't see the need for them to cancel this particular licensure exam because he was also asking from the point that the students, some of the students were arguing that and uh, when the students travel outside, it gives them that opportunity to go through the process freely. And so um, even though the students learn to trust in school, but they still need to write the 
the exams, and he doesn't see the need for it to be a scrap, Martin. All right, thank you very much, um, Evelyn Tingma, who has been to uh, some teacher trainee colleges to speak to a number of uh, the teachers and the students there on the decision of former President John Dramani Mahama, who is the NDC's flag bearer, saying that if the NDC does come into power, they will scrap the teacher licensure exam and uh, give a number of reasons as to why he would be doing so. You're still listening to 3FM 92.7. This is the Midday News coming to you live from our studio here at Adesawe uh, in Accra. Stories we've brought to you so far, the New Patriotic Party has revoked the membership of four individuals um, in the persons of uh, Hobson Adoye and uh, three others, Nanao Heninto as well, and uh, they are saying that it is because they have breached the party's constitution for endorsing the flag bearer of another party and not that of the NPP. Also, um, we would later be going to the Ashanti region to speak to our correspondent on the resumption of work by the jurors in the Ashanti region who were on strike following uh, the non-payment of some of their allowances. We also brought you the story of former President John Ramani Mahama, who has reiterated his promise to investigate the death of an 18-year-old boy in Techiman who died during the 2020 elections. And he's asked the security agencies to take the matter up seriously and uh, get to the bottom of it. Let's go to our earlier story having to do with the sacking of uh, some four individuals from the NPP. Um, and the party says that these gentlemen breached their constitution by endorsing the candidature of another person instead of the chosen flag bearer of the NPP, Dr. Mahmoud Bamia. Let's go to phone lines now and speak to uh, Dr. Sante Ochre, who is a political science lecturer himself. Doc, good afternoon. Thank you for your time. Afternoon, Martin. Political analyst. Political analyst. Uh, yes, sir. Thanks for the correction. Uh, what are your initial thoughts on this? Uh, it looks as though the party says, and, and rightly so in their constitution, they state mm -hmm. that if you do not support their candidature or anybody they've picked, then you are flouting the rules of the, of the party. Fair deal? Well, it is a fair deal. But the consequences thereof is what the party must equally, you know, be ready to embrace. Um, the point is that we have the first deputy speaker, the second deputy speaker of parliament, who is an independent candidate. But the party chose, or he chose to caucus with the party. And don't forget that the president himself had said that he was not going to work with any independent candidate. How did it happen that the president is able to now work with that independent candidate within? in Parliament, for which reason they now have, what, a majority group. So I think that it's as if we are implementing the regulation, the rules and regulations of the party, or the constitution of the party, you know, as and when it pleases us, or as and when, you know, uh, uh, it gives us an advantage. But here is the case, uh, Mr. Allen says that he's going, you know, on his way to pursue his own political agenda. Now, Obviously, it means that he can no longer be a member of the party, so to speak. Now, we have others who are following him. These are known faces who have occupied some political positions in the past, and they are forward of the party, so they are known faces. Some have been ministers and so on and so forth. So if you decide to excommunicate them, of course, fair deal, because that is the position of the party in terms of their constitution. But the problem is that here is the case, and I want to be very fair and firm on this. Mm -hmm. Mr. Allen some time ago said that if they vote for him, they should vote for the MPP MP. Don't forget that just a single vote can tilt the skills of uh, the seat to either this or that. Mm. So now that you have identified these people, you are you are in the, in the, in a, uh, what is it called? Um, you are virtually telling the support base of Allen that. If they vote for Alan, they shouldn't vote for the MPs as well. Right. And a party that is hemorrhaging should be very careful in the way they deal with these people. I would mm. have wished that they would have ignored them, said nothing about them, mm. and let's see how nature, you know, will bestow its own advantage and disadvantages. Okay. Because putting it in the public domain, for me, there are so many people that are not known, and they are supporting Alan. 
you are rather encouraging them to also to, come out right. and speak against your party. And I think that that will not augur well. For, for the, the party, party. The of the party. Doc, pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Asante Autry is a political analyst and uh, was uh, trying to put into perspective for us the implications of the party's decision to sack um, some four members. And uh, if you're just joining us, the four members who've been sacked from the NPP, uh, let me just run you, run by you the names of these persons. They are Yabuabia Samwa, Nana Ohininto, Hopson Nadoye, and Boniface Abubakar Sadiq. Uh, they have been sacked from the party. All their candidates' membership, I, sh I should say, have been forfeited because they've supported another candidate instead of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. You're still listening to 3FM 92.7. Let's go on to some other stories regarding this particular one because the Member of Parliament for Kwada Sud. Uh, Professor Kinsley Nyako has thrown his weight behind the decision of the party to sack members who have endorsed Alan Chamatin's candidature. He argues that this is necessary to maintain party discipline ahead of the crucial 2024 elections. I think uh, the decision of the general secretary of the party is a step in the right direction. The NPP is a political party that is governed by rules and regulations. We expect and demand discipline of all, of all members. And nobody uh, speak up than the party. So if you go against the lay down rules and regulations as captured in our constitution, the party uh, has the power to activate those relevant you know, provisions in our constitution to demand what is right. Because if this is not done, uh, it's going to uh, give others the oxygen for them to continue uh, 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 that uh, on that tangent. This clearly shows that the general secretary uh, is firm on his, on his job and he is ensuring that discipline, law and order, okay, are maintained in the party. And you heard Professor Kinsley Nyako, who is Member of Parliament for Kwada, so constituency. Still uh, talking about Parliament and politics, though the Speaker of the House, Alban Bagbin, has decried the financial burden that MPs carry in the line of duty. He maintains that it is unrealistic for Members of Parliament to shoulder these demands and be expected to stay away from corruption. The uh, Speaker made these remarks at a breakfast forum in Accra. An MP is an individual, and he is looking for his own means of transport and is to reach out to everybody in the constituency. And when they mean reach out, they don't mean just talk. He is to organize all the activities. He is to fund all the activities, but he is not expected to be corrupt. He is to pay all the school fees of students, pay all the hospital bills, do all the outdoorings, attend all the weddings and the chair services, and make sure that the contribution you give is higher than every other person. He is the one that should be lowly paid, lower than the appointed members of His Excellency the President, not the elected, mandated, legitimate representatives of the people. And here we are having been dubbed as a model democracy in Africa. Clearly, it means that our people are here to appreciate and prioritize the work we do. And that's the Speaker of Ghana's Parliament asking some very critical questions of the expectations of members of the House vis-à-vis -vis the fact that we do not expect them to be corrupt but expect a lot from them in terms of largesse. To our final story now and to the Shanti region, after weeks of course and justice administration to partially come to a standstill, jurors in the Ashanti region have resumed work. A strike was triggered by the non-payment of allowances to the jurors. This uh, move came in the wake of a meeting with the Chief Justice on Friday the 17th of November, uh, resulting in the decision to call off the strike. Let's uh, speak to Ibrahim Abubakar shortly, but before we do that, let's also hear Madam Gertrude or the Chief Justice Gertrude Tokonu, who assured the jurors during the meeting last Friday of taking measures to um, avoid undue delay in the payment of their allowances. Allowances in public service come late. We all appreciate that. So we have to take steps to do whatever we need to do to make sure that we don't allow it to get even later. But there's a question I have been asking myself. 
for those of you who work in the public sector, you are receiving your salaries. Ghana is paying you. Is Ghana not paying you? Ghana is paying you. And you are not giving Ghana the service that you are is paying you over there. As for justice and skills, we weigh and weigh. I put it to you that this is not fair. I want us to do some balancing and be fair to our nation. And as the Chief Justice, um, Madam Gertrude Tokono, let's speak to Ibrahim Abubakar now, who has been following this story for us. Ibrahim, good afternoon. Thank you for your time. We know the Jiro has uh, promised to resume work today. You've gone round. What can you report? Well, Ma Martin, I can confirm that i um, back to work. In fact, um, from morning till now, they've even attended to three cases at the Kumasi High Court. So they are back and they are working. And um, have they given any indication that it was primarily on the word of the Chief Justice? Uh, unfortunately, we seem to have lost uh, Ibrahim Abubakar there, who was updating us on the return to work of the jurors in the Ashanti region uh, following the fact that the allowances had not been paid. And you heard the Chief Justice there who was saying that the jurors should also be considerate because they are already being paid somewhat. Uh, for work they do elsewhere, still on the Ghanaian payroll, but then these allowances, which is work they are doing, or, or is still being recommended, work that they are doing but have not been paid an allowance, it should not be grounds enough for which they decided to be on strike. So the word of the Chief Justice got to the hearts of the jurors who, from that conver uh, conversation, brief one we had with Ibrahim Abubakar, uh, he has confirmed that they, they have returned to work. And so uh, that, that's the confirmation that they are back to work. So if you have an issue in the courts in the Ashanti region, you may have to return uh, to it because the jurors who are on strike have resumed work. You're still listening to 3FM. This is the, mid, the midday news coming to you live from our studio here um, from Adesawe in Accra. Stories we've brought to you this afternoon. The new patriotic party has revoked the membership of four of its members. Also, um, after weeks of being on strike, the jurors in the Ashanti region have resumed work. Like I just mentioned to you, we spoke to Ibrahim who confirmed that for us. And then also the NDC's flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama, has been talking tough and campaigning vigorously on his building Ghana tour. He has been to the Bono region currently in the Bono East region and uh, along the line he's been making promises and reassuring the people of what he will do if he does uh, get the mantle again to lead this country. One of it is that he has promised to cancel the teacher licensure exam and when he said that it was met with huge applause from a number of the teacher trainees and uh, their uh, tutors who were there because they also side with what the former president is saying that, you know, after writing exams every year, that particular licensure exam is an albatross around their neck. However, a number of the stakeholders within the education space also say that uh, that decision by the former president um, does not bode well for education or in terms of the quality of teachers we have in our classrooms. So it's still an unfolding conversation. We'll definitely keep tabs on it and uh, update you subsequently when we do get it all. And that's how we bring the bulletin to an end. Uh, my name is Martin Esidu Dati. Uh, the, uh, if you go to our website, 3news.com, you get many more of such stories. Uh, that's how we wrap it up. Up next is Business with Menu Afo.
this episode. Interest rates on treasury bills fall for the second week as government records about 14.8% over subscription. Also, economists' intelligence units forecast Ghana's inflation to reach 18% by close of 2024. We we'll bring you the details. And transport, transport operators describe new automobile policies introduced in 2024 budget as detrimental and a threat to industry viability. We we'll hear from the chairman of the Ghana Committee of Drivers Association. Our batteries that we use in our cars here, the thousand cities, thousand two, if we can afford, how can we afford to buy such amount to that battery? Hello, good afternoon and welcome to today's edition of Business Daily. Coming up this afternoon, interest rates on treasury bills fall for the second week as government records about 14.8% over subscription. Also, economist intelligence units forecast Ghana's inflation to reach 18% by close of 2024. We'll bring you the details. And transport operators describe new automobile policies introduced in the 2024 budget as detrimental and a threat to industry viability. We'll hear from the chairman of the Ghana Committed Drivers Association. We have these stories and others lined up for you. Do stay tuned. Thank you for your time. In our first story, the downward trend in interest rates on Treasury bills has continued for the second week running following an oversubscription of about 14.8%. Yields on the 91 and 364-day bills went down marginally, but the 182-day bill took a 10 with a marginal increase in its rate. The following three business desk reports has the details. According to Bank of Ghana's latest auction results, Government secured about 3.75 billion CDs on the treasury market against the target of about 3.26 billion CDs. A chunk of the bids were from the 91-day bill, from which about 2.45 billion CDs of the bids tendered were accepted. Government also secured about 568.5 million CDs from the 182-day bill and about 726.8 million CDs from the one-year bill. Following the oversubscription of about 481.94 million CDs, interest rates on the 91 and 364-day bills went down marginally. From 29.84% previously, interest rates on the 91-day bill stands at 29.74%. For the one-year bill also, interest rates went down marginally but still hovers around 33.45%. However, that of the 182-day bill saw a marginal increase to 31.876% from 31.875%. Experts predict the downward trend in interest rates will continue as inflation reduces and other macroeconomic factors stabilize. And that was a report on the latest Treasury Bill auction. On to more stories, Ghana will record an average inflation of about 18% by the end of 2024. The Economist Intelligence Unit has projected this will be a significant fall from the average of about 38% in 2023. The following three business desk reports has the details. According to the UK-based firm, Ghana is projected to have the eighth highest average inflation in Africa in 2024, surpassing Nigeria's 22%. It says inflationary pressures are expected to ease in most African countries, providing relief for policymakers and households. Despite this, EIU says inflation will persist into 2024, remaining a significant factor for several large economies, including Ghana, Nigeria, Angola, the DRC, Egypt, Ethiopia, Sudan, and Zimbabwe. According to data from the Ghana Statistical Service, 
October 2023 saw a decline in year-on-year inflation to 35.2%, attributed to a slight drop in food inflation, signaling a positive trend. Food inflation recorded 44.8%, while non-food inflation was 27.7%. That was the three business news desk reports. Away from that, transport operators in the country are expressing concern over new automobile policies outlined in the 2024 budget, labeling them as detrimental to their businesses. The union highlights the introduction of tax waivers for importing electric commercial vehicles as a threat that could render them uncompetitive and force them out of business. My colleague Michael Ogbudu has the rest of the story. In the latest 2024 budget release, the government revealed intentions to waive import duties on electric vehicles, EVs, for public transportation over an eight-year duration. This initiative extends to semi- and completely knock-down EVs imported by registered assembly companies in Ghana. However, Chairman Charles Danson from the Ghana Committed Drivers Association raised doubts about the feasibility of EVs in the country. Every three hours, you have to charge this vehicle. So let's assume that you are coming from north and in between the bush way get stuck of your battery how are you going to charge this battery there so we we, we could see that deliberately they are using with the commercial uh, transport to protest to go for climate change money he expressed concerns about ghana potentially becoming a destination for used electric vehicles while highlighting the financial strains on the association's members emphasizing their inability to afford these EVs. Our batteries that we use in our cars here, the thousand cities, thousand two, if we can afford, how can we afford to buy such amount to that battery? And we don't know the lifespan of the battery. So they shouldn't be in a hurry to go and bring something for us to use it here because we will know that deliberately they want to, they, they've given our job to the foreign companies. That's a commercial transport. Michael Lobodu, Three Business, Accra. We'll now shift your attention a bit away from transport to energy as energy expert and chief executive of Liberia Electricity Corporation is making a case for increased resources to develop renewable energy solutions in Ghana and the rest of Africa. According to Moni Kaptan, ECOWAS must spearhead the mobilization of investments since African countries contribute little to climate change to ensure an all-inclusive approach to combating the menace. You know, I, I believe that financial literacy is one of the key things when it comes to uh, participating in the securities industry or the financial sector for that matter. At the SEC, we say that uh, you know, an informed investor is a well-protected investor. The developed economies that account for most of the carbon emissions must share in the cost of the development of renewable energy in the developing world. This is not only fair and equitable, but more importantly, it benefits the entire world and not only our developing economies. Regional organizations such as ECOWAS must take the lead in negotiating with multilateral financial institutions to increase the resource envelope for renewable energy in our countries. The Ghana Energy Awards and the Energy Media Group present us with a unique opportunity to collaboratively advocate for our energy transition goals. We need additional forums where we create invaluable space for mutual learning, innovative thinking, promotion of best practices, and fostering a collective awareness and commitment to transition our economies from expensive and environmentally unfriendly energy to sustainable, clean, renewable energy. That was Chief Executive of Liberia Electricity Corporation, Moni Captain. Also, the Securities and Exchange Commission has admitted that the evolving capital and investment market is a contributory factor for the proliferation of fraudulent investment schemes. These schemes attract investors, robbing them of their capital and hard-earned resources. Director General of the Commission, Reverend Daniel Ugbame Tete, disclosed that there is an ongoing public education to caution potential investors against fraudulent but enticing schemes. I believe that financial literacy is one of the key things when it comes to uh, 
participating in the securities industry or the financial sector for that matter. At the SEC, we say that uh, you know, an informed investor is a well-protected investor because there are unfortunately a lot of uh, fraudsters out there. Uh, you may hear of money doubling schemes, um, you know, all kinds of uh, schemes trying to say bring this or do this and you get will double your money. And unfortunately, people are falling prey, um, you know, to these schemes. We, we need people to understand that, um, you know, for financial sector is a regulated space uh, there are rules and once we can get people to understand when someone comes on the scene and offers something that is outside um, you know the the framework that you know governs the financial industry people can then identify that no this is not right there is nothing mystical about securities industry i will encourage um, the investing public or the general public to not to say that oh this is too technical uh, this is you know too complex uh, we'll try and break it down but I, I believe that people must show interest and you know try to follow um, you know, the, the information or the material that we'll put out there Reverend Daniel Ugbami Tete is Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission. That will be all for Business Daily today. My name is Menu Afo. Do stay tuned. Log on to www.3news.com for more stories. Black Rasta will join in for Urban Blend shortly.